All right, seniors. Are you wondering what Kamala Harris might do for you if she's elected? Well, look no further. Today, I'm breaking down the details of her newly introduced proposal, Agenda to Lower Costs for American Families. I'm here to provide you with the facts so you can make informed decisions. Remember, this isn't about taking sides, it's about understanding what's on the table for your financial future. So let's dive into it. First things first, Kamala Harris's proposal has some big ideas. But what does it mean for seniors, especially those living on social security or a fixed income? Her plan is projected to add $1.7 trillion to the national debt over the next decade. That's a massive number, but what does it mean for you? Let's break it down. One of the key points in her proposal is the expansion of the child tax credit. Now, this sounds great for families, but what about seniors? Unfortunately, this provision doesn't directly benefit you unless you're raising a minor child. For most seniors, this won't have much impact. Next, she's proposing a $25,000 assistance for first-time homebuyers. If you're a senior who's never bought a home before, this could be helpful. But realistically, how many retirees are looking to buy their first home? For most of you, this won't be the game-changer you're hoping for. Now, here's something that might actually benefit seniors, lowering the cost of Medicare prescriptions. This could save about $250 billion over the next decade. If you rely on Medicare, this is a provision that could have a positive impact on your wallet. So, what's missing? Unfortunately, there's no mention of Social Security reform, no plans to raise benefits, or any proposals to lift seniors out of poverty. While other bills like the Social Security Expansion Act and SSI Restoration Act are out there, None of them have been included in Kamala's current proposal. This leaves a lot of questions unanswered for those of you on a fixed income. Now, to be fair, let's compare this to other proposals out there. For instance, Trump has proposed eliminating taxes on Social Security benefits a move that could benefit a lot of you. While this generally impacts those with a bit more income, it's still something to consider when comparing options. At the end of the day, it's about what's in it for you. Kamala Harris's proposal has some strong points, but it may not do enough for seniors. Keep in mind, things can change, and new proposals could emerge. Next we are discussing some breaking news that could shake up your financial outlook. This just in the GDP revised report for Q2 has been released this morning, August 29, and guess what? The government says the economy is doing even better than they initially thought. The revised GDP growth for Q2 is now 3%. According to Bloomberg, it's all thanks to the resilient consumer. But hold on. Now, according to the official release from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, BA, the economy is booming, and we should all be living the American dream. But here's the thing I'm finding it a bit difficult to fully buy into this rosy picture. Why? Let's talk about the labor market for a second. Remember that labor market report I covered a few days ago? The government had been telling us for over a year how strong the job market was. But guess what? They just admitted they were off by a whopping 88,000 jobs, a 38% overstatement. That's the biggest downward revision in 15 years. So, when they say GDP is growing at 3%, you can bet I'm taking that with a healthy dose of skepticism. Let's talk about this so-called resilient consumer. Personally, I'd describe it more like the paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck consumer, or maybe even the hang-on-by-a-thread consumer. Sure, not everyone is struggling, but millions are. The economy isn't booming for everyone, and the reality for many is far from the American dream. So, according to the revised GDP report, Corporate profits have jumped, consumer spending is up, and experts are reacting. KPMG's chief economist tweeted that stronger consumer spending is driving growth, while the chief economist at Comerica Bank said the economy is in good shape and consumer confidence is high. But here's my take, these pieces don't all fit together neatly. The labor market is weakening, but the economy is supposedly strong? 
it doesn't add up. The Federal Reserve is now more concerned about the labor market than inflation, and there's talk of cutting interest rates at their next meeting on September 18. If the economy is growing at 3% now, what happens when they start cutting rates and printing money? We're about to find out think of it like watching a train wreck in slow motion. As for inflation, don't expect an immediate spike when the Fed cuts rates. There's usually a lag before it hits, but I anticipate inflation will start re-accelerating in 2025, with full swing in 2026. But hey, who cares about the long run, right? It's all about today, and what a world we live in. Thanks for tuning in, Financial Futures fam. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and share your thoughts in the comments. I'll keep you updated as the story develops. Take care and see you next time.